Hi, and welcome to Manifestation Mondays with Marcy. I, of course, am Marcy Newman, your host, and we have a very important subject to talk about today. Um, and I want you to know that I know it's important because it's been coming up in conversation with a lot of people recently. And so I want to just dive right in without any further ado. Let's just get to the crux of all of this. And so I want to start by making this statement. The lens that you look through is what determines what you see. Now, you might be saying, Marcy, duh, of course. If it's a lens that's calibrated for, you know, seeing far, if it's a lens that's calibrated to help you see close, everything is determined on that calibration, right? Yep, that's true. However, I want to go a bit further and say this. What if that lens is scratched? What you're going to be seeing on the other side of that lens is a distortion, right, of what it is that you're looking for. What if it's dirty, cloudy? You're not going to see details. You're not going to see things clearly. So these are kind of givens, right? We want lenses that show us truth as opposed to illusion. That's why we're wearing these lenses. But the truth of the matter is, is that whether you're wearing glasses or some lenses of any kind that are meant to shift what you are seeing, we are also wearing lenses that are calibrated according to the energy that we are living in. Now, we have a lot to unpack here, but I want to make it as concise as possible so that you really get the gist of this message. So the caliber of the energy that you are living in, of course, is what affects your entire vibrational frequency. Um, and that is affecting your whole energy field. Now, <coughs> excuse me. So what happens when our energy field becomes scratched or foggy or there's a crack? What happens is that everything that we are looking at is distorted. We have a distorted view of the world. Now, there are lots of things that impact your energy field, and I know that you know this, but we're just going to briefly go through it for those who might be watching or hearing this for the first time. Of course, your belief system, right, has an impact on what you see. Um, if you are filled with anger, what you see is going to either feed that anger or it's going to come back as a reflection of the anger or it may come back as more opportunity to be angry. In other words, we know that energy is always seeking out other energy just like itself. And so that will come back to you. And it does have an effect on how you see the world. What I want to remind you of is that it actually started with you. That that anger that was, <clears throat> excuse me, brewing and rising up from within you is what created the angry response of the universe. And I want to emphasize this because I don't want you to believe for even a moment that you're being punished or that you're less deserving of someone else, of happiness and well-being or prosperity or abundance or health, because none of that is true. What we simply need to look at is the energy that we are radiating, we are emitting. And of course, you've heard me say this before as well, we learn to ask ourselves a question, 
is this going to create what I really want to experience? So what I want to talk about today, as we use anger as an example, I'd li actually like to go a little bit more expansive and say, what if, for instance, you have been raised in a society where competition is revered, where competition, you being pitted against someone else, is considered to be not only a way of life, but it is promoted. People rally around it. They want to make certain that the competition at all costs is what's put in the focal point of what they are doing. Now, competition, we've been told, there's a certain aspect of it that's very um, healthy, right? I'm not so certain about that, but what I really want to just focus on is that competition in terms of our manifestation ability, it actually has a detrimental effect. And here's why. When you have a mindset of competition, where you are favoring competition almost at all costs. What that is constantly telling you is that somebody must win and somebody must lose. When we bring that energy of competition into manifestation, there's only one person who will lose. It's you. Here's why. The energy of manifestation, meaning, I should say the process of manifestation, is really, again, to reiterate the energy that we are putting out into the world, out into the universe, and it goes out, it collects other energy just like itself, and it brings itself back in the form of experience. So it comes back sort of on a silver platter and says, here you go, master. Here's a great big, huge platter full of that energy. If it's a platter full of competition, you are going to be in this whirlwind of competing over and over and over for what it is that you want. Well, that's not the way the universe works. The universe is a benevolent universe. It is a prosperous and abundant universe, and there is no competition necessary under any circumstance. So if you are going into this process with any thought of competition, that you need to make sure that you get this before somebody else does, or that it's bigger or better than what somebody else has brought into their lives, you are setting yourself up not only for sabotage, but I'm going to go out on a limb and say you're also setting yourself up for some misery. Because it is counter the true nature of the benevolent universe. The energy of competition also is very narrow. The whole belief of competition is that you must follow this very narrow path. Think about a, um, what are those called? Oh, a relay race, right? You're all in your own lane and you are chugging away, chugging away, chugging away. And if you step outside of your lane, what happens? You're disqualified. Yep, push to the sidelines. The race goes on without you. Well, what is that lesson all about? That lesson says if you don't stay in your own lane, that you're going to be tossed out. That is counter the true nature of the universe because the true nature of the universe is one of inclusiveness. Hmm. So you can see that right away we have certain aspects of our lives that have been set up 
that may feel like when we win and we have the trophy that we have proved ourselves better than all others, that we won the race, that we got what we wanted, and we beat out every other person. We are the best. In this benevolent universe, there is no such thing. For each of us is a magnificent child of the universe. We're all loved and cherished beyond all measure. There is not one that's greater or lesser than the other. There is not one that's cherished over the other. And so I want to offer this to you today because I want you to really start to give thought to some of these beliefs or perhaps even um, uh, conditionings or programs that may be running your life and may be sabotaging you. As we become more and more aware of how we sabotage ourselves, we also can become more and more aware of the universal principles that are here to support us in living our best lives ever, because that's how each of us is meant to be living, in our greatest, most expansive version of ourselves, in our greatest, most expansive life, and of course, in our greatest, most expansive, benevolent hearts. So I want to leave you with this affirmation today, and I hope that you will keep it close to your heart, that you'll write it down, that you'll carry it wherever you go. Here it is. I celebrate my unique talents and my accomplishments. And I also celebrate those of all other beings, of all of my brothers and sisters, as we share in the expansiveness of our <clears throat> benevolent hearts, our benevolent hearts. The short version of that is, I celebrate my unique talents. I celebrate every accomplishment. And I celebrate those of my brothers and sisters, too. Woohoo! We're on fire. We are living our most expansive lives. How blessed we are. So, until next week, I hope that you'll carry this message and that you will start to live it. Let it change the lens that you're looking through so that the world that you see is welcoming, is inclusive, and of course, benevolent for all. Okay, so much love to you. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.